Grace, mercy, and peace be to you this morning from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it's that time of the year when for some New Year's resolutions are in full effect. We've had our chance to reflect on the past year, the places where there was maybe great success, the parts where things fell short, all that was and all that wasn't. And now those annual internal clocks have been reset, new year, new me. We've thought about where we've been. Now it's time to look ahead to where it is we want to go, the changes that we want to see happen, the trappings that we're tired of falling into. And so we resolve to do better. And if you're going to make a New Year's resolution, you really need to start out strong, right? It's the time of the year when places should be packed with people determined by sheer will. Whether it's the workout routine, the reading plan, the new and improved diet, you have to start big. Keep the street going. Come out of the gate swinging. No half-hearted attempts. After all, what kind of a tone would that set? Resolutions require strength and fortitude. If you want to achieve great and better things, if you want to leave that 2022 20, you in the past and become the better version of who you want to be. Our gospel text for today is all about a powerful, however unlikely, resolution. It didn't come at the start of a new year, but it did come at the start of a new era, the beginning of the ministry of Jesus, God's establishing of the kingdom of heaven on earth, the moment in time when God's action and movement toward humanity's salvation was so palpable you could almost reach out and touch it. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. And that was the resolution. If you wanted to enter into this new era, John the Baptist put that goal before everyone who came out into the desert to hear him. Bear fruit in keeping with repentance. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. It's time to shape up. Time to leave that old self behind. If you want to enter into this new era, this new kingdom, clear your hearts and heads now you want the clarity to see the one, the Messiah, who is going to come. And then we get to the one who came after John in our text. Jesus arrives, the very kingdom of heaven emanating onto earth wherever he was. And the first thing that Jesus does in his earthly ministry, the very first thing that sets the tone for all that is to come, is Jesus approaching John the Baptist so that he could be baptized by him? Certainly not the resolution that John would have in mind for Jesus. Why on earth would Jesus need to be baptized? John would rather have Jesus pull out the winnowing fork. It's time to execute some judgment. The king of kings is on the scene. Even John is confused and hesitant by this, telling Jesus, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? What baptismal benefit could this possibly give to Jesus? What need of repentance does he have? Is he in need of a spiritual boost as he prepares to be the Messiah? Is he just setting a good example for others to follow? When you get right down to it, there's really nothing about this baptism that Jesus himself needs. He's the perfect sinless son of God, no repenting, no spiritual boost, and not just a good example for us to follow. Jesus didn't need this baptism, but we did. We needed his baptism. Jesus told John, let it be so now, for thus it is fitting to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus' baptism is a great, powerful resolution, and it's a great picture of the kind of Savior that he is, the kind of Savior we have. And it's a moment that shows us the kind of promise that Christ would come to carry out. That in every aspect, at every stage of life, Christ 
stands with us. And even better than that, Christ stands instead of us, in our place. Taking on everything that God would have us do so that he can do it flawlessly for us. He's a promise maker who starts strong and finishes strong whose words of promise are just as powerful as his actions, a Messiah who does exactly as he says. Every resolution carried out to perfect resolve. Every promise fulfilled in the one that God is pleased. We're used to resolutions starting off with a bang, maybe. And things will go strong for a while until almost always will fizzle out in some ways. The gym becomes less and less crowded as time goes on. Books collect dust on the nightstands. The comfort foods creep back in. Ice cream tubs magically appear in the freezer. And as we go on, year after year, we come to realize that our sheer will, it just doesn't always cut it. We start with good intentions, but our resolutions, they get so diluted with apathy, with old habits. And it can leave you disillusioned in your resolution into thinking that you might have had a chance at all at a better way or a better you. This is true for us spiritually. Oh, how we wish that our sheer will could cut it, that our repentance could truly be a complete 180, a total turnaround from that sin that so easily entangles us. We intend for it, and God offers us full forgiveness. He wipes the slate clean every time. But even our repentant hearts, over time, can fizzle out. We can fall back into those same sinful trappings things we swore we would never do again, the place we vowed never to go back to. And yet it can be that place of sin that becomes habitual for us. It's like the Apostle Paul writes in Romans chapter 7, For I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death who will deliver us from half-heartedness and apathy, from words that promise one thing, but then our lives that do another. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord, Paul would conclude. That's why Jesus was baptized by John. Jesus was baptized so that the half-hearts could be made whole in their repentance and God's forgiveness so our inconsistent lives would be covered by the one who stepped into our place with perfect, enduring, and genuine resolution. All eyes on the one with whom God is well-pleased who comes to carry out our inconsistent living, our broken vows, all our sin. Upon himself without fail all resolve and no dissolve no fizzling out from him and that is our hope again this new year that we really are made new despite our sinfulness that even in our humanly half-heartedness God continues to create clean hearts within us showing us mercy strengthening our faith, making us a new creation each and every day whose mercies are new every morning, even when we are faithless, he will always remain faithful. So how are your New Year's resolutions coming along? It certainly is a good thing to strive toward better things in our lives. But don't forget in all that was and wasn't, in all that is and isn't in our lives, in places of great success and in the parts where things keep falling short. Don't forget the greatest resolution 
that was made for you. Christ has come to fulfill your righteousness. Our Messiah makes good on every confession of sin, offering full and free forgiveness as powerful and as real and as needed the thousandth time as it was for us the very first time. So here's to new beginnings and new starts. Here's to a new era ushered in by the King of Kings himself. And what a thing to behold as he again makes all things new. In Jesus' name, amen. Now as we are gathered to be God's people again this day, we stand for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day to serve you. We rejoice that you call us your own and you've given us an eternal hope in life through the life, death, and resurrection of your only Son, Jesus Christ. Bless us and be with us in all that we do today as we seek to follow you in this place, trusting that you go before us in all that we do. Gracious God, we lift up all who call on your name this day for those in need of healing. We pray for the father of student Emily Makos, who has been hospitalized for an extended time with many significant health struggles. We lift up the brother-in-law of Professor Alexa Dubley, who is hospitalized with a pulmonary embolism, and for the sister of Professor Carol Leaders Bulwark as she continues to receive treatment for breast cancer. Merciful God, for these and for all who look to you for hope and life and restoration, give them comfort as they endure these difficulties. Guide all the medical teams who tend to their needs and work your healing through all means that you would use so they can be restored and returned to their loved ones and the lives and callings that you've given to them. We give you thanks, Father, this day for your leading of President Ankerberg to serve and lead our Mequon and Ann Arbor campuses. We pray blessings on this new beginning that you would clothe him mightily in your Holy Spirit that you would give him peace in this time of transition for him and his family, and that you would unite us all to serve you in this place, cherishing the gift of each student that you've sent to us here. Finally, we pray for blessings on all those who are on campus for Winterham, for faculty teaching and students learning, for athletic teams competing, for groups touring and performing, and the staff who keeps CUW running. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the gift of our Concordia community. Strengthen us to follow you in what we say and do, that we would grow in faith in Christ in this new year. For these and all our prayers that are on our hearts and minds, we lift them to your throne of grace, trusting in your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we go with God's blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.